Uh, good afternoon, it's Roger Gilbert here from International Aquafeed Magazine. I'm in our digital studio called Rongo Rongo Live here in the UK. And I have the pleasure of talking this afternoon with Dr. Simon Davies, who is the editor of our magazine, International Aquafeed and Fish Farming Technology. And he's going to tell us about a new disease that's attacking uh, prawns and, a, and shrimp in a huge way. It's called uh, iridescent virus one. And it's a decapod virus that is having a devastating effect that has just come to light in China. Welcome, Simon. Welcome to uh, Rongo Rongo Live. Uh, could you tell our audience a little bit about uh, this new virus that's uh, an iridescent virus one uh, decapod, please? Well, thank you very much, Roger. I'm uh, very interested in uh, fish pathogens and, and shrimp pathogens now. It's linked very close to my other areas of expertise, which is primarily fish nutrition, aquafeed nutrition, obviously. However, we have to have good stock to work with. And um, this new virus has come to my attention through the press and through publicity in terms of uh, trade journals, other trade journals and news sites. And um, I've been able to do a little bit of background work here and uh, found it's very, very, uh, it's a nasty disease which is affecting the industry, primarily uh, at the moment, the giant freshwater prawn, the Macrobrachium rosenbergi. And as you correctly said, the virus is termed iridescent virus one. And it's linked to, um, a, it's a virus that has been around for some time. It was uh, first identified, I believe, in 2014. But it went rather quiet for a while, and now it's re-emerged as viruses do. It may have mutated uh, to be able to be um, infecting more, more widespread. And the evidence suggests that it can be up to 80% uh, cumulative mortality, Roger, mm -hmm. in, um, in extreme in cases. And it equates very well in many ways what we're seeing in, this, in, in the swine industry too with um, the, the swine food. Yes, you're telling me earlier, uh, Simon, that maybe it's the conditions under which some of these shrimp are being farmed that might encourage yes. these sort of viruses. Uh, can you explain a little bit about that? Well, there's huge variation in the husbandry techniques in terms of um, the farming of shrimp, open pond systems mm. ranging from open pond extensive systems to semi-intensive closed systems and semi-extensive. So there's a, a variation in, in the application of husbandry in terms of mainly water quality, environmental conditions. Normally these viruses, they're, they're, they're around us, but it takes certain stresses, certain husbandry stresses and uh, changes in management uh, operations to perhaps invite the virus to uh, proliferate. So, so as we see a, a more global approach to our fish farming uh, industry, is the <laughs> quality and indoor production, those sort of uh, techniques that we're adopting, recirculation systems, are they becoming more significant or more important in controlling these types of diseases? Yeah. Yes, I do believe that. And, and um, one of the biggest, um, I'm an advocate, and many people are, of the bioflock system where we have a much healthier environment. We can control and cultivate a complex bioflock, a mixture of organisms that can outcompete some of these, these viruses, and not just the viruses, but the bacterial infections we see as well. So, um, as I said previously, there are such a, a widespread um, management procedures that range from... Um, open pond culture and uh, to closed systems where you can control the bioflock better. Mm. I was recently in Mexico where I saw a very nice operation for bioflock. Okay. And tell me, is this a disease that's uh, in one region specifically or is it uh, starting to affect uh, more widely? It has been uh, principally in a region of China where they farm um, the shrimp. Uh, there's a, case, a few case studies which highlight specific farm environments, but in these farms, it's been uh, these globally reported diseases are. Um, there's a lot of other diseases out there, like WSSV, which is another viral um, pathogen which causes white spot uh, syndrome in in, in pinnated shrimps. But this particular DIV1 or decapod iridescent virus one has been principally in regions of China, where there's been significant growth of the shrimp production and macrobrachium. Mm. Is it a bit like uh, how we are being challenged by coronavirus and our yes. response to it? Is uh, mm -hmm. social dis distancing uh, suggested or uh, yes. a, a, an, a, an approach for shrimp farming? 
we can tell each other to keep six feet apart or two meters apart, but it's very difficult to communicate that concept to a shrimp. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's a, by nature of shrimp farming and other types of aquaculture, we're talking about also stocking density differences. And of course, this is a, a principal aim is to grow our shrimp in high quality systems and at, at stocking densities which are commensurate with their uh, health. Mm. Um, sometimes we can push that a little bit too far and environmental conditions are stressed and, and uh, with other aspects of perhaps uh, transportation of shrimp and fry and post larvae mm. around to stop these farms from the hatcheries, we're asking for, it's an open agenda. Yeah. So what, mm. what in a nutshell would be one or two of your main recommendations? Well, it's very hard to deal with viruses, and like um, bacterial pathogens, you know, um, we are able perhaps to do a lot more there in intervention and prophylactic approaches, such as in my own field of great interest is uh, functional feed additives and prebiotics and probiotics, which we can use at these key stressor points. Um, with viruses, it's better to try and start from a, from ground zero and protect the shrimp from better with better management. The feed and nutrition, obviously. Is important because it can prime the immune system and raise the system. But in shrimp, they have a, a primary cellular response system based on the hemocyte. Uh, it's an innate immune system. They do not have an acquired immune system, and it's very almost impossible to vaccinate against diseases yeah. like this in shrimp. So the best thing we can do is manage this very well and um, learn what the conditions are like in terms of my, what might promote the disease in the first place. Mm. And uh, strict biosecurity control, hygiene, and to um, have standard operational procedures which farms can standardize, because the problem is in many countries, there's a lack of communication between the various farms. Mm. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, thank and you. There has to be stronger government intervention and yes. control, as we have seen now recently in China with the wet markets, that kind of scenario has to stop. Yeah. Well, yes. Simon, you've covered some very interesting points there, and particularly about how we might uh, develop more control mechanisms for eliminating this be yes. type of disease before it starts. But thank you very much for spending time with us this afternoon. All the mm -hmm. best uh, and your COVID uh, situation here in the UK with us all yeah. in lockdown. But hopefully this, this virus we can control as well at the same time. Yes. But thank you Indeed, very much, Roger. Simon. Thank you. And thank lockdown you. should not mean shut down completely. Yes. So I think we can control these with better dialogue. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.